Basically, I want you to prepare a list of things that you can turn to when times are tough or you need to raise your vibrations. And I find that having these things ready in advance makes me feel more confident that I have a plan and something I can go to when stress or anxiety hits. You're listening to Prospecting on Purpose, where we discuss all things prospecting, sales, business, and mindset. I'm your host, Sarah Murray, a sales champion who's here to show you that you can be a shark in business and still lead with intentionality and authenticity. Tune in each week as we dive into methods to connect with clients, communicate with confidence, and close the deal. Hello, and welcome to Prospecting on Purpose. I have had a bit of a challenging week, and I've been thinking about this concept of resilience and how we stay positive when things aren't going our way or we're facing some type of challenge. And it's not always easy. The definition of resilience is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties or adversity. Another way to look at this is how quickly we bounce back from stress, shock, trauma, or how well we process pain. And on top of recovering from situations, how do we use the experience as an opportunity for growth, learning, and developing mechanisms to better handle future challenges? In psychological terms, resilience is also associated with mental fortitude and emotional strength. We all have personal challenges going on in our lives at some point or another. The people we love, our family and friends, maybe going through hardships. And of course, it can get overwhelming if we zoom out and we look at the state of the world, both the people and the planet. It can sometimes feel uh, really difficult to stay positive and stay forward thinking if we start to focus on all of that. I view one of my jobs as a citizen of the world is to stay as positive as possible because I know that for myself personally, that's the only way that I'm able to help people. And it requires some intentional focus, especially when I don't feel like it. And it can honestly be difficult to stay positive. So for this episode, I'm going to cover some questions that you can ask yourself to reflect on your own resilience levels or, or fortitude levels. We will get into six tips to increase your resiliency. And the final tip is a very robust one. It is my go-to when times are tough. We're going to cover how to create a tenacity toolkit for yourself. I'm going to list off nine questions, and I'd like you to think about these questions honestly as just an opportunity for reflection. How do I typically react to setbacks and difficulties? Think about this from emotional responses and behaviors. What are my go-to coping strategies during tough times? How do I handle emotional distress? Do I tend to face my emotions head on? seek support from others, or avoid them altogether? What lessons have I learned from previous hardships? Do I feel capable of handling new challenges? Who do I turn to when I need help? How do I take care of my physical and mental health during stress? Am I able to maintain a positive outlook? Do I adapt well to change? When researching for this episode, I read that 82% of people rate themselves as feeling like they're really resilient. But then when you look at data and the actual individual assessments, it's actually closer to 57% of individuals feel capable of handling stress and staying resilient. And I actually took four different tests online in preparation for this episode. And my results were anywhere from 62 to 85% in resilience scale. So pretty in line with those numbers that I just shared. I feel like there are different areas in life where we are more resilient than others. But every area of our life intersects with one another. So you may feel totally capable of handling stress at work. But when it comes to having difficult conversations in your personal life, that may be more challenging for you or vice versa. We are going to get into six different tips to help you or the people in your life when times are tough. Our first tip is a reminder that no state is permanent. And I like to look at the Ferris wheel analogy. So just like a Ferris wheel, life is in constant motion. Sometimes you're at the top enjoying the view, you're on top of the world, your perspective is clear, you can see all of your goals, they all look achievable. 
And then other times you're at the bottom of the Ferris wheel. The view is limited. Perhaps you're feeling a bit down. You're facing challenges. And the key is to remember that the wheel keeps turning because no state is permanent. Anytime you're at the bottom, you just need to trust and understand that you will soon be at the top. And this allows us to stay present and manage the difficult times. This too shall pass. Our second tip is to approach any challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow stronger. Now, this is easier said than done, but one thing that really helps me when I'm in it or about to go through it and trying to muster up that grit to keep going is I remind myself, wow, I am grateful for this opportunity to grow. Anything that challenges us makes us grow stronger. So if you can zoom out, look at it as an opportunity to grow, be grateful for this opportunity, that helps kind of level set the perspective. The third tip is to seek support. Lean on your professional network for guidance, motivation, and feedback. And then on the flip side, lean on your close network for emotional support and comfort. When you're in relationship with others, you are allowed to ask for help or a shoulder to cry on. If you're anxious about asking for help, flip the script for a second. Imagine if your close friend or colleague came to you and they said, hey, I'm really struggling with this. In almost every case, you'd be happy to help carry some of that load for them. And sometimes even just holding space for others to vocalize what they're going through is enough. That might be what that person needs. We need to give ourselves permission to ask for help. The fourth tip I want to share is to focus on the controllables. Many people, myself included, can start to spiral thinking about things that we literally have no control over. And if you create that clear delineation, is this something in my power to change? If it's a yes, then review tips one through three and go tackle it with a growth mindset and support. If it's a no, then do your best to release it because it's not in your control. Maybe it still impacts us, but we've all heard of this quote. It's by Epictetus. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Our fifth tip, you know it's coming. We got to prioritize that self-care, y'all. And this is really making sure that your cup stays full. We hear this all the time. You can't pour from an empty cup. And thinking back to our Ferris wheel analogy, the center of the Ferris wheel, that main axle, that is your self-care. That's the most important piece to keep everything moving. And if that breaks, nothing else works. This brings us to our sixth and final tip, which relates to self-care and how we actually execute. But it's this concept of building yourself a tenacity toolkit. Basically, I want you to prepare a list of things that you can turn to when times are tough or you need to raise your vibrations. And I find that having these things ready in advance makes me feel more confident that I have a plan and something I can go to when stress or anxiety hits. Some of the things that are in my tenacity toolkit are taking a walk. Even if I don't feel like it, just put on the shoes, leave your house, get outside. Walking always grounds me. Sometimes I just wear my sneakers around inside because that literally gives me more pep in my step. I listen to music. I created a playlist called Pumped on Life. That is my first stop. But if I really need to get amped up, I will revisit songs that I jammed to in high school. Anywhere from the All-American Rejects, Sugar Ray, Yellow Card, Good Charlotte, the Lizzie McGuire movie soundtrack makes its way into the rotation quite frequently. Anything that just kind of separates you from yourself and gets you in a state of positivity. Along with music, sometimes I'll dance around. Tony Robbins always talks about changing your state. And the fastest way to do this is by moving your body. So jumping around, dancing, that helps quite a bit. I meditate. I use an app called Insight Timer, and I find a guided meditation that fits the time I have available. I also use an eye mask that I love. It's called Nod Pod, sort of like a gravity blanket for your eyes, and that helps me quickly drop into darkness and peace. I'll call a friend. I'll take a bath. I'll read a book. I'll journal. I have the go-to things that help me reconnect with myself and ensure that I'm performing maintenance on that main axle of my Ferris wheel. Other things that you can consider for your personal tenacity toolkit could be something as simple as using essential oils or lighting a candle, deep clean your house, tidy up your office, 
do something that totally turns off your brain, go to an exercise class, learn guitar, take an art class, volunteer, go on a walk with your friends, go on a hike with your friends, play with your dog or your cat, go on a fun date with your partner, do something special with your kids, look at photos of loved ones or from a time that was at a high point in your Ferris wheel, like a great trip you went on, plan a trip, buy concert tickets, have something fun to look forward to, play a video game, Play a game on your phone, play on a game night with friends, do a jigsaw puzzle, help you get into that focus zone, recite mantras that help you, maybe you write them on a post-it note or a label maker and put them where you need to see them. This is a good one. Turn off your cell phone and put it in the other room for a couple of hours or for the whole night. And I know that when we're really busy and overwhelmed or we're dealing with something that's really serious, this idea of stopping what you should be doing and doing a jigsaw puzzle doesn't seem like it's going to support you getting through whatever you're going through. So if this is uh, something you're kind of thinking as I'm, I'm walking through our tenacity toolkits, I encourage you to just set a time limit for yourself. Tell your family you're going on a walk around the neighborhood and you'll be back in 30 minutes. Set a literal timer and do that jigsaw puzzle for 15 minutes. These short breaks and pulling from your toolkit is going to help you reset, get grounded, let yourself breathe, maintain that main axle, and give you the energy boost and attitude adjustment that you need to keep going. I believe in you. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please share it with a friend and leave a review for the show. It means a great deal to me helps raise my vibes too. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Prospecting on Purpose podcast. If you loved what you heard today, subscribe to the podcast and please rate and leave a review. For more info on me or if you'd like to work together, feel free to go to my website, sarahmurray.com. On social media, I'm usually hanging out at Sarah Murray Sales. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.